Mic check one, two. What's up? What's going on? Welcome back to the Agostino Zingo Show, episode number 109, with me, your host, Agostino. What's going on? How you doing? How you feeling? Hope you're fine. Hope you're well rested, well hydrated, well looked after. And I don't know, limbered up and all that malarkey, you know. Hope your limbs are nice and loose. Um, hope you don't have any mobility issues and you don't have any tissue damage. Um, and, 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 most importantly, no joint issues. Hope you're all well and good. Um, I hope you're nice, man. I hope you had a great weekend. I had a pretty eventful weekend, a pretty interesting weekend, um, which I'll get into a bit later on, but I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are well rested and shit. Um, for those of you watching on the video portion of the podcast, you'll be able to see that I have shaven my beard down somewhat to a level one. So if you're wondering who this young, dashing, handsome black man is staring at you, worry not. Don't get afraid. I've not been abducted by a foreign agency and then replaced with a doppelganger that looks exactly like me but younger. Instead, I look like younger. How amazing is that, right? What a result, right? I look incredibly younger since I've, you know, shaved off my beard. But it's, it's funny. It's interesting how much, how different, how much different um, a person of color looks when they shave their beard or cut their hair, right? I've always noticed that whenever I even just shaving the side of my head and keeping all this fucking dreads on top of it, right? It makes it just it just changes the whole dynamic of my face and just cha- just shaving my beard down somewhat also gives me a bit of an edge, which is really funny to see that. But I guess it's it's, it's probably the same for all men, right? I remember when, when my dad first my dad's got like a really thick mustache, like a caterpillar sort of thing that hangs on his face. And I remember when um, I was younger and he first got his beard, he first got his mustache uh, shaved. Um, me and my brother started crying when he came into the house. You know those videos you see of kids when, like, their their dad who had like a massive beard shaves and, and they get really freaked out. Yeah, we did the same thing. We didn't recognize who the guy was before. It was some like, you know, our dad got abducted. Plus, it didn't help during that time. I used to suffer from really bad nightmares about my family. You know, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, dying in a blaze of glory or something, or in like some sort of house fire, or being abducted, or uh, <clears throat> being house being burgled. And then the abductees like kind of tying us all up and you know slitting our throats as we lay there, and they walked away with our PlayStation and our uh, Sky Digital box. <clears throat> so I'm sure that didn't help with everything I had. I've got a really cloggy, uh, phlegmy throat. I think it's with the coffee. Coffee does that to you, isn't it? It's so um, it's so necessary for a working man such as myself. But god damn it, it kind of phlegms up your throat, doesn't it? it gives you a nice that like, that phlegmy, phlegmy throat feel. But hey. Um, enough about the Fleming my esophagus and more about my weekend. So, Agostino had a very interesting weekend, as per usual. Um, weekends are always interesting when you're required to DJ in bars and pubs for people who probably don't give a shit that you're there, right? Um, so, during the come up, during the session of my um, hobby, because, you know, my DJing at the moment is a bit of a hobby that I enjoy immensely, right? I, I take real pleasure in um, trying to figure out new tunes to play, new orders to play them in, and how I'm going to construct and um, construct a night that people will like in terms of my playing of music. So, you know, I, I spend most of the week thinking of ideas, stuff I want to do, and then I end up trying to, like, you know, um, put that put that to work um, during a party um whether that party may be so um at the moment at the, at the moment i'm djing you know a couple of you know mostly every friday at a bar called tapis in westfield so that's usually quite fun um for the most part it's full of you know just regular folk who are usually usually it's full of people that are kind of you know shopping in westfield and want to have a pint before they go home uh sometimes you get some locals who hang around in there you get a lot of um the kind of like um hat what do you call what would you call them council workers guys that sweep the streets and all that kind of stuff um some construction dudes who kind of pop by and have a pint because you know um tapis has like a nice little outside area so if they feel a little bit dirty and they don't want to sit down in the chairs they can easily just go and stand outside have a cigarette have a beer and then and then it's full of some t- and then sometimes it's full of people who are going out so people who are going um out for a night out and all that stuff from Malarkey might come to Tap East, have a beer, and then head off to their location because, you know, the, the Central Line station is basically a, a five-minute walk away. So that can kind of help it. But overall, you know, it's a bit of a mixed bag of a crowd. So, you know, you're not really necessarily... <coughs> you're not necessarily... Oh, please, car. Let that go by. <coughs> you're not necessarily... Um, actually, talking about police cars, this morning, some, some guy or girl... 
I, I couldn't really make out who the the gender of the person, but they got knocked over the, on their bike at a junction just outside my window. There's a really like shitty junction where um, the road kind of got like a T shape, like an upside down T, right? But there's no clear markings on the road and no real traffic lights in that junction. So people just kind of, you know, I just kind of bend it in and out. And plus, I think the one of the roads that turns, there's a bit of a blind spot whenever you turn in to like, the t um, whenever you turn left or right into the road. Because there's a wall that kind of covers it. So you can't necessarily see what's coming uh, uh, on the other side. So you have to kind of like, you know, slow down yourself and then kind of turn in. So there's always kind of accidents that kind of happen there. Plus when cyclists are, are kind of like cycling uh, towards Stratford, they have to be on the left-hand side next to the curb. But then obviously left-hand side next to the curb is also parallel to the junction. And then sometimes the cars can knock across. So I'm assuming a car trying to like turn right and the bike trying to um, go straight across uh, to Stratford kind of collided with each other. <coughs> and it's always funny when you see someone well funny you know because you know i'm hoping the person's all right so it's funny to see someone crash into a bike because the bike's one place and the, and the person's another place and the bike was all the way on the other side of the wall and the person was lying in the middle of the street and people were just like going around people were just kind of like driving around the person as they lay strung on the street and and some um good samaritans were kind of like checking up on he or she and making sure they're okay but it just goes to show just how um, non-stop London life is, right? Um, there's a person, like, that's just got smashed on their bicycle, right? On the f on the Lying on the floor, withering in pain, I'm assuming. And everyone's just kind of, like, stepping over them. Psychics are, are kind of, like, going around. Cars are going around it. Um, it's just, you know, it, it's just, just an unnecessary convenience for some people. It's fucking nuts. But, hey, I guess that that is what it may be so yeah anyway so you, um when i play tap piece it's not much of a captive audience but sometimes you know you get the opportunity to play for private parties and stuff where it's a bit more of a um, going out your crowd whatever but you know still there is that risk that it can be a bit dodge podge so this weekend i had opportunity to play for a private birthday party for um a young female who was celebrating her birthday and um I agree to do it because, you know, at this moment in time, um, with DJing being a bit of a hobby and me just enjoying the fact that I'm able to play in front of people, you know, I'll, I would be, I'll be, I, I would, li I would be lying if I said that I wouldn't do it for free because I would, right? I'd be happy to do it for free. I love just playing music and being able to go out and practice my shit. And um, especially after listening to um, many, many, many a podcast with up and coming comedians or comedians just in the industry, because I kind of equate DJing is quite similar to uh, com uh, comedy in that regard. You know, it's a one man solo show. Um, you're having to go up and do kind of different things in order to kind of captivate the audience. You have to kind of read the crowd. Um, and, and the kind of come up is a bit brutal the same way, right? You're playing in like, you know, I've played in people's houses. I played in shops. I played in art galleries. Like you're playing in these weird places where people just don't sometimes the environment doesn't really call for you. You know, sometimes sometimes you can get hired to DJ somewhere by a person with good intentions, but then you get there and it's like, you guys didn't need a DJ. What you needed was, was a jukebox or you needed a good playlist on, on Spotify, but you didn't need a DJ. You didn't need me to sit up a table and stand there and play songs. It doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't even look cool because sometimes when they sometimes when they hire people to DJ in stores, they don't even get like a good DJ setup, like a good booth. They just get you to set up on a table that's already in the store. And you just and you're kind of bending over. You got that weird kind of bendy arch going on, and it just doesn't look cool, right? No one's really around you. Um, you're playing music for a crowd that doesn't necessarily care. You're there for like seven hours during the store's opening. You're getting given canapes and little flutes of champagne. You know what I mean? Like like you're a girl or some shit. It's just not the it's not the, it's not the vibe for me personally, right? It doesn't make sense. But sometimes I feel like they could just they could just be they'll be better off if they hired like a live band. Or if they had someone doing magic tricks, which I fucking hate. I fucking hate magic, right? But if you sometimes maybe someone doing magic tricks, maybe uh, a girl singing a cappella or some short shit, right? Like an LMA type girl doing her kind of R and B stuff, like you know what I mean? Um, all that malarkey, right? Um, boot up, ba ba ba, boot up, boot up, all that sort of shit, right? That would probably work better. But that can happen. But sometimes you you also get those kind of dream gigs where it sort of like works out and it's really quite fun. Like when I've played in warehouse parties and stuff where it's been like so amazing, right? That you can feel the fucking energy coming off of people as they kind of, you know, are listening to stuff that you're playing and all that malarkey. It's just, I know it's a good, it's a good vibe, right? Um, and then um, you get the, you get the things where I played the other week at a private party and you get to play for somebody. So friends, it's this girl's birthday party. She hires this bar. This bar, um, I'm familiar with the DJs that play there because we play together at Tap East. They request that I join them. And I'm like, yeah, no worries. I'm not doing anything on a Saturday. Anyway, I'm free. It makes some extra money. You know, it's only around the corner. 
Um, I'm going. I'm going to Berlin this weekend. So why not? It's extra spending money for me to go away with. Like everything kind of lines up pretty well. So I decided to go and play there, and then um they say, and then she emails me a few weeks before or the, the 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 um the young lady that requested I join her to DJ there. She then emails me and says something which kind of stirred up some alarm bells, right? That the girl who ha- who's kind of setting up the party wants a Studio Fifty Four theme, right? Which is fine because I went to watch Studio Fifty Four documentary the other um, a few weeks, a few months ago, right? A few months ago it came out. I think it's available now on DVD or something. I think I saw it come out or the sort of screeners on torrent sites, whatever. So you can check that out. It's a really good documentary. I highly recommend you check it out. And um, if you're not familiar, Studio Fifty Four is at like the legendary um seventies and eighties club that's located in New York that kind of spawned the whole disco movement within America and kind of nightlife and club culture. They were were kind of infamous uh for kind i would say inventing but maybe popularizing the velvet rope theory right the idea that you know um guests or patrons of a nightclub should be split up uh based on their kind of um social status whether you be a celebrity whether you be uh somebody that's well known a social like all that man that's where that started from and you might see pictures of it before of like hordes of people standing outside of this massive kind of um discotheque in new york trying to get in and you know frantically shouting at the bar at the door guy and trying to get him to kind of like you know let them beckon him in and it that kind of started the whole idea of having uh pickers at the door people that would make sure that the the club had the right patrons inside it and didn't have people that were going to kind of spoil the mood anyway so i've been a big fan of studio 54 for a long 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 time right i followed a lot of that kind of um the loft arena mud club uh c c cg cbgb's um all those kind of new york kind of in 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 institutions that kind of you know paved the way for nightlife culture that paved the way for clubbing culture and that kind of was kind of copied like in all the different cities across europe so you know i'm very familiar with that whole scene that whole idea so i got told oh it's the 54 theme no problem then next message is like oh they prepared a playlist right <coughs> we should already be sending you warning signals if someone hires you to play at a dj part to dj at a party and then give you a playlist of songs that they want to hear you play hmm you're in t- it, 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 it's just off some alarm bells, right? Because I imagine if you're a comedian and you were go- and you were hired to play a comedy set somewhere, you might get told not to have any profanity in your jokes, right? Nothing explicit because you know there's kids around or there's people that have m- maybe conservative viewpoints. That's fine, but you wouldn't necessarily tell the person to tell a certain amount of jokes, right? You wouldn't tell them to like you know here's the jokes I want to hear from you. Now there is some comedians out there who do that. I've heard some comedians who are, who get hired for. Uh, private gigs i forgot who it was someone mentioned that a comedian got hired by a couple like a really famous hollywood couple who really liked his comedian and just wanted the comedian to basically redo whatever special they saw on netflix um in their living room word for word essentially they didn't might want any new material they just wanted to hear that same routine in their in the pleasure of their own home so i guess if you have the money to do that why not right i'm assuming that's what some of those middle eastern guys do when they kind of hire a beyonce or rihanna to come do like a 30 minute set right they kind of want to hear Brianna, Beyonce, Jay Z, whoever it may be, just do the album that they heard on their iPod live, and they don't mind paying a million bucks to get them to play for an hour and then fly straight back to America. I'm sure that happens, right? But I don't know. Sometimes I think when you're like in the beginner to intermediate stage of DJing, sometimes it does help. It does kind of help you and help the person that's hiring you if you've kind of stead if you kind of stay steadfast in what you are about, so that if they do need you for for future events or if they do recommend you to other people, they know exactly what you play and what you're about, right? They can give a better assessment of who you are instead of like them giving you a playlist and you essentially um, working like a, a human version of a jukebox. I don't necessarily think that serves anyone any benefit whatsoever, right? Because they will be better off just having a playlist and just skipping through the songs. But I guess some people just want, I don't know, maybe they want the body behind the DJ booth, want you to, I don't know, it just maybe have some more ambiance. Maybe it's the fact that it's your birthday and you can kind of show off to your friends at work and say, I've got a DJ playing, da, da, da. it makes the sound, event sound a bit more popping. Anyway, I decide to go anywhere and think, you know what, fuck it, what's the worst that can happen? It's fifty four vibe, they've got a playlist, the playlist wasn't shit, it was actually a good playlist too. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to download all these songs and I'm also going to add a few of my own, right, just to kind of keep the balance because I don't want to just go there and just play their songs, right? Um, which might have been a mistake, right? I, I accept that, but also, you know, I'm not a jukebox, so I kind of want to mix stuff in, and I think I've got a good enough command or good enough understanding or good enough knowledge base of that kind of music genre in order to kind of do a good job without me having to have a playlist, right? But a playlist might steer me in the right direction. So I get there, and 254 theme, right? And um, before that, um, the girl that hired me, um, 
or the girl that said I should come and play with her was, you know, insinuating that we had to make a bit of an effort and dress up, right? Which, whenever people do that, I always know, I always have it in the back of my mind that I'm going to get to the party and it's not going to be as dressed up as I thought it was. It's always like that. I don't know why. I'm not sure. I'm sure you guys have uh, examples of it. Whenever someone is really keen about getting dressed up to a party, I always feel as if it's like a jinx. It's kind of like when someone says, oh, yeah, I, that thing is definitely coming in tomorrow, right? Or I can't wait until I start this, right? You're kind of like jinxing it, I feel like. You're kind of preempting it, right? And the universe has a, has a really um, weird way of kind of like slapping you back in the face. So I thought, you know what? I bet you any money I get there and some people won't even, be, won't even give a fucking flying fuck or won't be dressed up at all. So I finally just, you know, I decided to kind of put an outfit together that is, is, you know, hinting in the direction of some sort of like disco flair, right? Not very disco-y. I don't have flares or anything with that malarkey. But, you know, I, I do the best I can. I put my outfit on. I get to the bar and I look, as I peer through the window, I see plenty, plenty of Oxford shirts. Now, again, I, I'm not saying I'm a genius. I'm not saying I have the most knowledge of disco culture in my, out of anyone that exists in, out there in the world. But I'm pretty sure... There weren't that many Oxfords being worn um, in on the floors of Studio Fifty Four during the during its heyday. I'm pretty sure Michael Jackson didn't turn up to Studio Fifty Four wearing an Oxford shirt from Uniqlo, right, and a pair of fucking chinos and some Converse's. I don't think that's what happened, right? So for the most part, most of the guys there made absolutely no effort. The guys that did did make an effort, as per usual, which is I don't know, it's a weird thing, right? Every I don't know if it's a white people thing, but. Whenever there's an event that requires you to dress ex- like an extraterrestrial, right? Like an alien y, um, we're going to space event, they love sequins, right? Sequins are just a, the, the perfect way to go for some white people. I don't know why. They love sequins like a way of like showing your kind of like personality and a bit of edge. It's a bit strange. Sequins and glitter. So I saw a lot of guys wearing sequin jackets. Like, it's just party to do. It's 354. Sequin isn't. I don't, I, anyway, whatever. So I made the effort to dress up, and half the people in there aren't even dressed up anyway. So that was a big warning sign. Then I decided to kind of jump on the deck. So it's my it's my kind of set to play. I'm playing from ten to one, so kind of a good time to kind of warm up, get peak hour set, and then close out really good. You're right. Two t- three hour set is a good <coughs> length of time to kind of carve out a really good musical journey. I think in a, in a nightclub, right? Some people, for the most part, um, some people for the most part don't really. Um, some people for the most part don't really like that kind of thing, right? Um, like to play maybe a little bit more of a shorter set, but I actually like um, I actually like playing longer sets. I like the idea of kind of carving together like a bit of an arc, a bit of a story, a bit of a you know, yeah, a bit of a story, a bit of a timeline and stuff. I want to play. So anyway, I start I start playing right, and I think everything's going well. People are kind of responding well to the music, and then ten minutes or twenty minutes into the songs I'm playing, the lady that's um it's her birthday says to come over to me and say, hey, it's my birthday. I'm the birthday girl, right? She's already a bit inebriated um, and she kind of, you know, she kind of wants to make me aware that she's the birthday girl and it's her special day, right? So I'm looking at her and I'm like, oh, straight away I know this is going to be a fucking um, birthday Godzilla, birthday Zilla. You know those bride Zillas, right? A B-day Zilla, right? She's already inebriated. She's kind of, you know, commanding the space in front of the DJ booth. She's kind of pulling on all her friends. She's um, jumping around a lot, making a bit of a scene. Um, and generally she's, she's going out of her way to make, she's going out of her way to show that she's having fun. Have you ever seen that before? Right. In a birthday party when someone hires out of space and they want every, and, and even though they know the vibe isn't as poppy off as they want it to be, or, you know, cause when I got there, I was told by the bar manager that they were expecting 70 people to come there. And I think only 30 turned up, which is, you know which is kind of the standard kind of ratio sometimes for birthdays in general. I'm assuming she probably had a lot more people clicking attend on her Facebook event if she did have one, right? And then then um, the people that actually do attend is far less than the ones that do kind of like say they're going to come, you know, so things happen. Plus on that on that Saturday, I think it was, it was quite wet that whole day, a bit groggy and uh, wet and muggy and shit. And I'm that person too. If it's a bit muggy and wet, and it's an event that I'm not that really enamored about. I will just stay in. And I'm someone that likes to go out. So imagine people that don't really like going out. They'll find any excuse to stay in, right? So that gen- tends to happen. So I'm assuming this girl kind of was a bit bummed out that not all her friends turned up, right? So she was going out of her way to show she was having a good time, you know, jumping all around. And then as I'm DJing in an hour into it, I kind of start to notice that there's a couple of old ladies in there, right? A couple of mums. And then I'm realizing, oh, this girl, like, hide the bar, right? For her birthday party, um, decided it's going to be a Studio Fifty Four theme, right? 
put in a disco ball, which is the extent of their decorations, and a couple of balloons that said at the age 30. And then invited her mum to come to the party, right? Like, or kind of like requested her mum join her at this birthday party. So the mum, the mums were there, and I was just like feeling so sorry for them, of course, because like you know they shouldn't be having to, be, they shouldn't be having to be put through this um, exhibition for their daughter. Do you know what I mean? Like they've done, you know, you know, imagine you've done all the work um, bringing up a child, right? You've gone through all the fucking a heartache and ball ache of fucking cleaning their, their shitty ass, you know, wiping their snotty nose, giving them money when they've wasted all their own money, comforting them when they've been, uh, when they when they go out with somebody that you knew wasn't good for them, but they wouldn't listen to you, um, comforting them when they've lost a job that was bullshit to begin with, but they didn't want to listen to you. You know, you've done all the fucking selfless parenting stuff, and then at 30 years of age, you're, you're charged requesting or demanding that you come to their birthday party. Like, it's so fucking... It's so selfish, right? I think, personally, in my opinion, right? I'm pretty sure that mum would have much have much better things to do on her fucking Saturday evening than to be in a bar somewhere in the middle of Hackney Wick. So, anyway, they decide to come down anyway, and they're there having a good time. And then, and then you know, a few hours in, I'm playing the songs that they have in their playlist towards the end because I kind of, you know, just want to make sure everyone's happy. And I'm getting requests. Can you play this? Can you play that? No, I cannot, right? Because if you see me playing a, in a bar somewhere and I've got a couple USB sticks stuck into a CD player, how many songs do you really think that I've got on there? Or how much of a library do you think that I have? Do you think I have all the songs in the world on those USBs? Or do you think I have some? Uh, that's that's the general thing I'd like to kind of like think for out there, right? For people that request songs in, in the fucking DJ, in a party in, in general. What are you doing? I think maybe I have a distorted view of this because I've worked in a store, right? So I'm, I know how to treat people because I think sometimes people that haven't worked service jobs before, have worked in a shop or worked in a bar, have a tendency to be a little bit entitled when they go into spaces, right? They demand certain things, right? Um, but I don't think in my entire life, even pre, even pre, even, even um, pre-DJ um, quote-unquote hobby or career, have I ever gone to a DJ booth and asked someone to play a certain song? Maybe when I used to go to Vision sometimes and my friend um, Craig Wardey, CW, would be playing there and you'd play an amazing song that I like, a Playboy Carty song, a Waka Flocka song back in the day, or a Gucci Mane song, I might go up to a booth and say, will that, will that, will that? And usually, he would, sometimes he would, he would um, agree, sometimes he would kind of like tell me to fuck off, don't worry, I'll play another song that you like, right? But I never went to a booth and asked him to play, I don't know, fucking Usher or some shit. Like, no, that's not what you do. You go into a space, you hear what they're playing, if it's not what you like, you leave. You don't request them to play the songs that you want in order to make this, the night better for you. That's fucking ludicrous, right? So, again, really, really annoying already, right? That's kind of set the tone. It, perhaps it's, a, it's a private birthday party, right? You've given me a playlist. Like, let me go through the playlist. Don't now ask me for songs. But they are asking. And I'm trying to I'm trying to be polite, but after a while it gets annoying because they start coming in whilst you're in the mix. They're demanding your attention whilst you're changing a song. Like, well, like let me finish mixing the song, then I'll come to you. But, they, again, that doesn't happen. So anyway, it carries on, carries on, carries on. And then, you know, towards the end of the night, I'm trying to get a little bit annoyed, right, by the birthday girl because she's just a bit of a pain, right? You can tell her friends don't really want to be there or don't want to be there that late, right? They're kind of getting a bit annoyed with her kind of f fake uh, happiness that she's trying to kind of uh, broadcast because she's already, you know, she's kind of got her, 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 her kind of satisfaction levels were pinned upon um, the expectation that people are going to come like everyone that she invited was going to come there and lord her with praises and admiration and kisses and shit. But because half the people didn't turn up, her night was kind of shit, which is what I hate about birthday people, right? I don't mind if you're going to be a birthday person, but the birthday person usually, right, is more worried about who's going to come than actually celebrating their birthday. That's what they're bothered about. They're actually worried about people coming to their birthday. They want to look important. They want to walk into a bar and have like the whole section of that table in the back end raise up and say, happy birthday. They want that fucking spectacle. They'll be able to turn around, like, wow, this person's so popular. That's what they want. They don't really want to celebrate their birthday with their, with their kind of nearest and dearest. They just want that spectacle of having everyone around. They want to have like massive cohort. They want to be in front of the fucking queue. No, they want to be in front of the fucking group of people um, doing a bar crawl, right, with that massive fucking uh, birthday pin and a ridiculous hat and a balloon that says whatever age they are walking down the street. That's what they want. It's annoying, but that's what happens, right? Anyway. So this thing continues. They go on and on and on and on with this, right? Requesting songs. I'm kind of brushing them off. Requesting, I'm brushing them off, requesting, brushing them off, and I start playing what they want. And then towards the last half an hour, they start to get excited. They were screaming and shouting the songs I'm playing. So then I start to end the set exactly on time, right? 
and then this girl comes two or three times before I'm ending, and I say to her quite clearly, it's going to end at one. I'm due to play at one. This is my last song. And she gets really annoyed. And I played the last song, which I think is t- um, um, Donald Summer, I'm Coming Out, which is a general, you know, everyone kind of likes that song. She doesn't like it. She gets annoyed. I play the song, and she walks off. She turns back around and says, DJ's before, the DJ before you was better anyway. And I just and I just start breaking out laughing. I couldn't help it. Like I couldn't even be angry anymore because everything that I had thought of in my head about this girl, right? How she had a really bad attitude, you know, how she was um kind of um self centered, only worried about herself, um, was more worried about who turned up to her event than actually celebrating it in a genuine way that people that were there. She was pretending that she was having fun but she really wasn't. She was trying to get drunk but she wasn't getting as drunk as she hoped she was getting. Her parents having to suffer and seeing her kind of flailing her arms around trying to pretend she's having fun. It was an absolute shit show, right? So I already like didn't like her in my head. So whenever she when, when she when she manifested that thing in, in in out loud and said, "Oh, this is before you was better anyway." In a weird sort of like trying to like cut me down and and dent my ego, I just laughed because she's confirmed exactly why I thought of her. And if anything, it confirmed again my theory that people that celebrate their birthday, um, who are over the age of twenty five, are by and large dickheads. I've never met one that isn't a dickhead. I think anyone that goes out of their way, right, to hire a bar, to make an invite, to invite people more than twenty people to come to your birthday, you're a dickhead. I'm sorry you're a dickhead. There has to come a point in your life where you, when you grow up as an adult where you decide that you're not going to celebrate your birthday anymore. Or you just have to. You just, I'm sorry. You shouldn't be allowed to celebrate your birthday after the age of 25. Why are you celebrating your birthday? Now, I don't mean not kind of acknowledging that you're turning a certain age and having a whiskey with a couple of friends or, you know, buying, buying some drugs, having a joint somewhere, sitting in a park, talking about old times. You know what? Thumbs up to you. Thumbs up. Have a blast subjecting people right when you're over the t- age of 25 we're all got we've all got our own careers we're all working we're all kind of chasing our dreams some of us are in relationships some of us are not in relationships some of us are i don't know we've got family stuff that's going on people have got their own shit happening in life right the last thing someone needs is an obligation right you have to come to this i'm doing that this is my first gig this is my birthday party. You have to come to my opening. Ba 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 ba. What gives you the right to say that? Like, what gives you the right to demand my time? To demand I come to your event for what? So I can stand there and watch you get fucked up? No, thank you. I'd rather not do that personally. I'd rather not do that. And I've not met one person. I swear to God, I've not met one person in my entire life, right? That has that kind of attitude. That does that kind of thing. Who isn't cool? Oh, sorry, who is cool? Not one. Not one. Not one. Now, everyone I met that is cool and celebrates their birthday, you know what they do? They grown us about it. You know? They text their nearest and dearest. Nearest and dearest. Actual friends. Not like um, randoms who they want to come to their birthday so they can feel happy and have get loaded over. They text their nearest and dearest and say, hey, it's my birthday. I'm not sure what you guys are up to today, but I'm going to go have a drink at this, at, this, at this nondescript pub. If you want to come down, come down. Let's have a beer or two. And they go. But the people that don't, the people that don't do that and want to throw the big, um, grandiose party, I'm so happy when I see them and they have egg on their faces because uh, 25 of their kind of supposedly friends didn't come to their birthday party. You know what? They're not your friends. That's why they didn't want to come. They're not bothered. They're like, you know what? Someone else will take my place anyway. That's what I do when someone's invites me to a birthday party. I don't really know them or like them like that. I just don't go. Because I think in my back of my head, you know what? Someone else, will, someone else will turn up for me anyway, right? They won't notice I'm not there. But trust me, if that person invited you, they notice. Because there's some people that do this weird thing where they'll invite people to come to their birthday and they'll actually mark off the people that turned up. Like, that's fucking sadistic, narcissistic to the fucking nth degree, right? Making a fucking list of the attendees that didn't turn up to your fucking birthday. Like, go and jump off a fucking cliff. It's terrible, man. It's fucking terrible. I think it's terrible. And, I've, I, and I just... I don't know. And again, I just think anyone that would... Because again, it didn't hurt my feelings. Because, you know, after the after the party happened and it finished and we, it was at the end and the girls were wrapping up and stuff. And I said bye to them. I act like nothing happened. But I did kind of pull up in it and said, hey, like, what you said earlier was, wasn't was nice. Do you know what I mean? Like, if some... I don't understand how you can how you can feel like you could just say things like that to somebody just because you didn't get what you wanted. Do you know what I mean? You're 30 years old. You need to grow up a little bit, right? I kind of pull up. Oh, no. I didn't mean to be rude. I'm sorry. Whatever. I don't want you to apologize. I'm just letting you know that you shouldn't go around 
telling people they did a bad job because they didn't do what you wanted to do, right? But honestly, right, I, I don't know. I'm just bewildered. An adult at 30 years of age, right, getting into a bit of a strop because I didn't play their exact song when it ended. Like, <sighs> insane, insane. And it goes to show, like, again, private events, private events for the most part are absolute gobbledygook. That's why I'll probably never play a wedding, I think, in that regard, because that's what you're going to get, right? Unless you're happy just to, like, unless I'm happy maybe to bring my laptop and play with my controller and then just, like, whatever they want, I'll just play it, right? And it'll just sound like absolute dog shit um, as a set. But again, you're not really playing for a set. You're just playing as a kind of requester, right? You're, you're sort of like playing, you're sort of kind of playing like the, you're kind of um, the quote unquote resident Spotify track picker, right? That's something that can happen at a birthday party or like a house party where someone's got a Spotify on and it's kind of playing um, random songs, but then someone wants to change the song, but you know, no, no one's bothered to kind of stand up and change it. So it can be handy to have someone just to kind of select the songs, right? But fuck me. Fuck me. Like, honestly. The worst, the worst person in the world, the worst person in the world. That person that does that event is the worst person in the world. And again, it made me kind of, you know, it, it was a good reminder of just exactly where I am in the kind of uh, hierarchy of DJs and kind of hobby wise. Like, I'm still at a level where I'm having to eat this fucking shit at the moment, which is fine. I'm happy, you know, to do this malarkey because this is the way you kind of build up your reps, your sets and reps, and you get what you need to get to. But I do see the argument because there is, I do have a few friends who are a bit snobby about this sort of thing and I won't play at the places I play. We'll only play in like trendy bars and clubs in like Dorset and Shoreditch because the thinking behind that is that where I'm playing, no one that matters or no one that's in the scene that's going to kind of change my quote-unquote life is going to be there, right? So they'd much rather play in trendy East London and play a good set and kind of like have the serendipity or, or have the luck that a booking agent for this festival or somebody that's involved in that label or someone's involved in that online radio station is going to pass through, hear what you're playing and request that you join them somewhere else or even a fellow DJ that might like what you're playing, right? So they don't want to play a shitty place that I play because no one of any sort of merit in the scene is going to hear what you're playing. But then in my on my side, I, I always go back to the kind of hard work uh, beats, the kind of opportunistic sort of like waiting for someone to give you a shock sort of thing, right? I'd much rather have my destiny in my own hands. So I'd much rather just put on a night somewhere um, every four months in a nice trendy bar. But then in between that time, when that thing isn't happening, be playing every single week, getting my sets and reps in. Because I know uh, playing, playing out loud in public uh, a particular set every single week is going to make me better at DJing than any amount of uh, playing once a month in a trendy bar in East London. I think so personally, right? I think I'll be a much better dj overall than they will be because i'm playing more often out loud um because sometimes playing at home can be good too making mixes and stuff and uploading them but you know there isn't that kind of like call and response you don't get that kind of pressure of seeing people walking away or seeing the dance floor clear up and then having to bring them back in again right that kind of you know that kind of to and fro and you can only learn that when you're actually in proximity in that kind of building but then there is you know i kind of get the argument you know that you know that, that person wouldn't have to go through having a fucking birthday zilla um, berate you and tell you you're a shit DJ because you didn't play what they want because they'd be playing in a trendy pl place in Dawson where no one's going to really request a song from you. Maybe the odd song here and there, but for the most part, everyone's going to kind of leave you alone because they kind of get it, right? They're, you're in an environment where everyone kind of gets it. Everyone's kind of like um, in a, a, a group agreement of what this kind of night entails, right? I play the songs, you dance. If you don't like it, you go somewhere else sort of thing, right? It's, it's, like a, it's, it's okay to do that. But yeah, wow. That that was past most of my night. Then I went to a warehouse party in Hackney Wick for a, a little bit, um, which then resulted in me misplacing my phone, which I'm going to pick up tomorrow, um, unfortunately. Um, but that's okay, because I'm going to click it anyway. Um, and then that was about it, really, for the most part. So I did that for the most part, and then kind of, you know, figured out where I want to stay in Berlin. I got my Airbnb confirmed, which I'm going to um, hopefully arrive at on Friday. All fingers crossed and toes and all fingers and toes crossed because you know sometimes these airbnb guests have a tendency to kind of cancel your um your staying last minute.com so hopefully that should be sorted out and then yeah berlin on friday all the way until sunday no all the way, sorry all the way until tuesday what i'm talking about which is going to be super super fun i think dj harvey's playing on the saturday too which should be fucking amazing so harvey's playing on a saturday and then um and then i think i'm gonna go to about blank on a friday no, Harvey's playing, I think, on a Saturday in Berkheim. So I'm trying, I'm going to try to go there Sunday morning. 
until Monday morning and then kind of sleep on a Monday and then come back on a Tuesday. So it should be a fucking intense uh, week weekend of just partying and having a good time. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, again, I'm going to try not to drink as much as well in Berlin because, you know, sometimes clubbing 24 hours, it doesn't really call for it. You can sometimes get you really tired. You end up going to the bathroom too often. So I'm going to try and not do that as many times as I can. And eventually just, you know, kind of really just go for it, man. I'm going to absolutely go for it. Absolutely go for it. Have a good time and enjoy myself because this is probably the last breath I'm going to have until the end of the year for the most part because I don't think I'm going to go away anywhere for New Year's Eve or anything along those kind of lines. Um, but yeah, but that's basically what I'll be doing for the most part. But anyway, um, as this was just a short kind of check in, just to kind of you know make you guys aware that I'm still alive and uh, nothing's happened to me, I'm gonna end this podcast right here. It's a bit of a short one this today, but I'm gonna come back tomorrow with my regular scheduled programming. So you should hear uh, your long, your kind of usual hour hour plus ranting from I tomorrow but i kind of went to get off my chest i kind of ranting and raving about this private party that happened on the fucking saturday absolute birthday zilla but yeah um i'll see you guys again i think tomorrow i'm definitely going to make another one tomorrow so i'll make another podcast tomorrow for you guys so uh tune in then as always uh check out my website actionzinger.com for updates on the things that i'm doing again as i mentioned i'll be in berlin from friday onwards i think i'm going to take my podcast equipment with me i'm going to do a podcast hopefully with a guy that i met out there a producer that i'm perfectly going to do an interview with It'll be my first sort of like um duo interview or other person on the microphone that should be interesting and then yeah i'll see you guys again tomorrow hopefully do another one again on thursday too before i leave and that will be it. So this has been the Axios Show episode number 109. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll, go, I'll see you guys again tomorrow for a regular scheduled programming. And I'll come back again with all the regular info you guys love and love. Thank you so much for joining in. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.